Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Kirkland Baptist Churches. We continue our little topical study on uh, social duty. And uh, today we're going to look at our social duty to enemies. And uh, tomorrow we're going to look at our social duties to strangers. So we have a obligation. Remember we talked about our neighbors and our social duty to brothers and sisters. And as we've been studying our responsibilities as a Christian. And, and I, I think that as we... As we just look at this study, we can uh, just pour a little, pour little messages together, if you would. Uh, it kind of covers the whole spectrum of everybody we come in touch with. And uh, we know that uh, there's times that we come in touch with people that uh, don't want us around, and maybe we don't want to be around in that. So, but it tells us as uh, ministers of Christ, as uh, disciples of Christ, we need to be demonstrating that love and that care for everybody, even to those that uh, don't care for us. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning here for a few minutes. So I'm going to look at uh, social duty to enemies. You know, an enemy, what is an enemy? Well, it's a person that uh, doesn't really want good for you. Uh, they're an, you can call them an adversary. Um, they, they're someone that, that looks for ways to hurt you or to damage you in some way or another, maybe physical. Uh, a lot of times it's physical, maybe emotional. Uh, spiritual even. Uh, we just see people that are just uh, mean to one another and uh, they, they turn out to be our enemies and so it tells us how to deal with them. So I'm going to look at a few verses here. Let's look over at Exodus chapter 23 and verse 4 and it says, if, if, thou, if thou meet thy enemy's ox or his ass going astray, in other words his, his livestock is his, some property of his, if we want to bring it up to date, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. And so he it, it, said, if you see your neighbor's animals uh, drifting away, we come from a farming community, and uh, if you see somebody's a cow or the hogs or something's out, you know, you, you do what you can to get them back in to help notify the people that own them anyway that they're out. And uh, we do that with, you know, we look at that even past uh, in personal property and, and uh, things that uh, we see that, that may need attention. And so we bring their attention to something that needs to be done. And so it's... Uh, Demonstrating to the enemy, the one. Now listen, this is the one that don't care for you, and uh, they they don't they don't want to do good for you. But you're going to reach out to them, and then it, in uh, Proverbs 24:17, uh, he says, uh, "Rejoice not, listen, now, rejoice not when thine enemy faileth." In other words, something bad happens to your enemy. Don't don't rejoice in that, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. In other words, if you see your uh, someone that uh, got a, a lady or man that doesn't care for you, you know they're considered your enemies, and uh, they're trying to destroy your testimony, maybe you're trying to hurt your life or whatever. Uh, he says if something happens to them, maybe they get sick or they lose their job or something. Don't don't you know? Hey, you know they de they deserve that. You know the way they treat me and that's you know they deserve to have these things happen. Well, we don't want to do that. That's not the that's not the showing the love, is it? Remember, we talked about love several times, and what is love is to to look at somebody and want the best for them. We want to do what's best for them. So even with our enemies, he tells us, and we're going to see that in a little bit about it, what we need to have an attitude toward our enemies. So when our something bad happens to someone that that uh, is considered your enemy, uh, you don't just you know, hey, they deserve it and so forth. We we do what we can to help them through that time, and sometimes that works to advantage. Sometimes they don't receive it well, but at least we do our part, okay? And then, <coughs> excuse me, then we go to Proverbs 25, uh, and verses 21 and 22. And he says, Now, if the, the enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. So if you see an, your enemy has a need, he's hungry, he's thirsty, he needs something. You know, maybe shelter, need to close, whatever. Yeah, you're to help him meet that. And what in verse 22, some people think this is kind of a, uh, a a bad reason maybe to do it. But he says, uh, "For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee." In other words, it, he, thou put the heaps of coal of fire upon the head, and the Lord shall reward thee. In other words. It's not literal fire. What it is is to maybe make a person feel so self-conscious, so maybe ashamed or embarrassed that after they've treated you so bad and done so many bad things for you and quote-unquote is your enemy, and here you are meeting their needs, and they would feel you know, embarrassed and guilty. Uh, on the same idea, if we went over to Romans, I'm going to turn over to Romans in chapter, here we get to chapter 12, and verses 19 to 21. And here's what he says over there. He says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather, rather get placed under wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So when somebody mistreats you, you don't know, get even. 
But we go down to verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And then verse 20 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And it goes back to the same idea of the, the coals of fire we read about over in Proverbs. The idea that uh, by doing good for somebody, you know, maybe they'll, they'll reconsider how they think of you or how they treat you, that, that you might embarrass them or, or make them feel guilty enough that they would repent and change, and you might change from an enemy then to a friend. So, And the whole idea is what? The whole idea is to demonstrate the love of Christ that they might see there's a difference uh, in you than there is in the world. And so we, we do these things with the, with the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to see that person uh, come to know Christ as their Savior. And so we go, well, one more place here. I'm going to go over to Matthew chapter 5, and uh, we're going to look at verse uh, 44. I'll just go up to verse 43 here and start in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we know this is the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, that Christ gave, and we just got through reading about the, the Beatitudes and so forth. And we get down here to verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Okay. He said, But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil, and on the good, and send the train on the just and on the unjust. And of course, we go on a little, read a bit. I'll read verse 46. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? So when we get back up to verse 44, it says, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you. And so I would just ask you, you know, uh, I think probably we all have uh, people in our lives that we come in contact with, maybe on occasion, maybe because in work or, or in other social aspects or uh, whatever, and that, that we really don't want to be around. They don't treat us well. Uh, they, they maybe abuse us physically and spiritually, emotionally. We hear about bullying and those kind of things. And so uh, how do we respond to that? We just ask, how many times do you pray for that person? And I'm not talking about praying in peccatory prayer that God will strike them dead or anything bad to happen to them. We just talked about that. But how many times do you pray that their attitude would change, that, that God would be able to touch them somehow, maybe even through your testimony and how you react to all these circumstances, that God might be able to touch them and draw them uh, to himself, that they might become a Christian. And guess what? If they become a Christian, they'll no longer be an enemy, but then I'll be a brother or sister in Christ. And so he telling us right here what to do, how to respond to that. He says, we love them. What, is, what does that mean? It means I, I want the best for them. I'm reaching out. I, it's, a, it's not something that, um, what I want to say, I, I, it's something I want to do. I'm not made to do it. I, I guess you should say you're kind of forced to do it because of who you are in Christ. But the idea is that uh, I want the best for them. Uh, they're another human being. Remember what he said in verse 45? He said that, the, uh, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and the rain comes on the just and the unjust. So we're in this together. We're, you know, as human beings, we go through this fallen world together. But the bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. We're going to use those terms. But the idea is that God allows things to happen in all of our lives. We lose loved ones, we have sickness, we have lost. All of these things are common to man. So we want to be sure that we're showing the love of Christ for those that don't know Christ. For those that don't know Jesus, if you're watching or listening to this today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father through Christ the Son, you need to repent today. You need to turn, put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin, believing from your heart that you're forgiven of your sin when you trust in that blood and you have eternal life. So do that today. And for us as Christians, it's not always easy, but he tells us right here what we need to do with our enemies. We need to love them. We need to seek the best for them. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life, that we would be obedient to your word, Lord, and put human emotions aside sometime and just those things that we get uh, upset with, Lord, and those people we get upset with, help us to demonstrate the love of Christ and show that, that we care about them and, and it, that you care about them. And those that don't know Christ, we pray we would make an effort to share the gospel to lead them to you. So those that don't know Jesus, we pray this would be the day that they would repent, turn and put their faith in Christ and have eternal life. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.